what's up indie babes welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing a lace front sewing yes girl we still out here doing sewing so if your style is not doing sewing you're not booking the right stylist either way it go make sure y'all go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time i drop a new video so let's get to it i already washed and blow dried my hair my client's hair off camera and now i'm just gonna go ahead and braid her hair down and we are just doing straight back braids and we're connecting them in the back just to make sure that it's super flat and seamless all around if you're ever doing a braid down and you're wondering how big or small your part should be just make sure that they are small enough but still intact with the density of your client's hair so sometimes when you're braiding a uh, heavier density hair or a higher density hair, however you want to call it, the parts are going to be smaller. But if your client has like a lower density or a thinner hair, then you can make the parts a little bit bigger. It's whatever works for the client. It's not like one set guideline or one set rule on how big or small your part should be. It's based on the client. And then once I'm finished braiding her hair down, I'm going to go ahead and sew that last braid onto the base of the other braid and then i'm gonna oil her scalp down real real good with some envy oil and if y'all wondering what envy oil is it's a oil that i will be launching sometime this year i'm still working on it but yeah it's some real good oil y'all so just stay tuned and i'm gonna let y'all know when y'all can get y'all some so after i oil her scalp down i'm gonna go in with my got to be gel the yellow bottle and I'm just going to go ahead and sleek all her edges back so whenever I apply her um, cap and her frontal none of her hair is out or exposed and it doesn't get like caught on the glue and stuff so yeah go ahead and slick that back and then use your blow dryer to dry back so that when you put your cap on it doesn't come up and then I'm going to take this HD wig cap that I got from Amazon I'm going to put it on her head and then I'm going to cut her ear holes out after that I'm going to use my Touch by Misty's glue or Misty's glue. I don't really know what it's called, but it's the Misty's lace. And yeah, like, why would I do that? Like, oh my God. I don't know how my top got off. I don't know. It doesn't come like this at all, y'all. I don't know what I did with the top, but I'm pretty sure it's something that I did. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it go. We just going to keep going and we just going to play it off like it never happened. So since I don't have the cap on it, don't know where the cap went, I just went ahead and improvised. I put some down on the paper that the cap came in, and I'm just going to use the tail end of my comb and go ahead and outline the perimeter of her hairline. And after I do that, I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm only showing one side because just to let y'all know, I film when I film, I film for youtube tiktok instagram facebook i don't know which one of y'all which platform is gonna hit but one of these platforms is gonna hit one day and i'm gonna have content on all of them you feel me so either way it go i'm gonna go ahead and sew down the cap across the part where um the frontal was gonna go and i'm gonna tie that off in a knot and then i'm gonna cut off the excess uh cap in the back and then keep going from there so today with my sewing i'm gonna show you guys how i do the flip over method just so you can make sure you can reuse these bundles over and over and over and over again okay so yeah i do penetrate the weft whenever i am applying a new track or ending uh a track so i'm just gonna go through it two times just like you see me doing in the video and then i'm going to add the track underneath uh the bottom of her braids and then i'm going to sew that front part in um like two or three times and then i'm going to tie it off in order for me to tie my tie my um my thread through why am i getting some tie omg in order for me to tie my thread in a knot i just wrap it around wrap the thread around the needle two or three times and then pull it through and that's how i get my knot so i don't have to go cut the track and then tie it in a knot like that i can just loopity loopity loop it and keep it moving and it's just way quicker like that so yeah i'm gonna go through and um do a loop stitch across the whole head and then when i get to the um area where i'm about to flip over i'm gonna slow it down for y'all so i double my webs and that just makes it so i can fit as many bundles as possible and when i double them 
this is what I do to flip it over. So I'm going to split the two um, in half, get the top part out of my way, and then I'm going to get it out of my way, like I said, because <laughs> I don't know why I want it to be stuck. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a couple of stitches, a couple of loop stitches in that area, pull my um, needle through and get it super secure. Y'all, sometimes the the um, the thread be hating on me a little bit and it be wanting to fall and stuff, but yeah, we're just still going to get to it. After I do a little couple of stitches, I'm going to fold it over and hold it down with my thumb. Make sure that that extra piece that's underneath, the top part is now going to be underneath it, if that makes sense. Like, y'all see me doing it, so you just got to watch and listen. Um, so, that part should be underneath. The one that was on top originally should be underneath it now. You're going to fold the um, original one over, and then you're going to add a couple of more loop stitches and tie it off and make sure it is as secure as possible so that it doesn't move when you keep on going down then you're going to go on and just keep on sewing it and then when you get to a good spot to where it is flat and seamless you're going to take both pieces of the weft combine them back together and then you're going to continue to sew in a loop stitch all the way across and when you're finished it should be extremely flat and extremely seamless um, and I'm going to show you guys how it looks whenever I'm finished. Throwing it down, it should look exactly like this. Completely flat when you flip it over. It should be no humps, bumps, lumps. You know, none of that. Whenever I'm finished with that, I'm just going to continue to sew the hair exactly like I just showed you guys. Every time I flip it over, I'm going to do the exact same method going back and forth until I get finished with the... I think like I did two bundles at this point. It was two bundles. And then when I finish those uh, first two bundles, I'm going to stop and then show you guys how to apply the frontal. So not all bundles are created equally so just because i said do two doesn't mean you have to do two we just gonna get to that spot right there like right below the ear slightly above like right at the area where the ear like at the top of the ear that's what we're gonna say the top of the ear yeah real sexy like just like that at the top of the ear um we're gonna stop adding the bundles so however many it takes to get to that point that's how many you're gonna use and then you're going to move on to the frontal. So I went ahead and I cut that excess uh, cap off. And now I'm just going to go in, um, clean her forehead, and then I um, apply some skin protect. And then I'm going to do three layers of glue. And you're going to apply it on kind of thin. It looks like it's a lot, but it's really not. Like, apply some thin layers and smooth it out as much as possible. And then when it looks like this, you can go ahead and add your frontal. So for me, I always cut my um lace before i apply i just feel like um when you leave too much lace on your installs it just looks really nasty trying to like um conceal all that lace and that's why people have to overly use baby hair like i like my installs to be able to maintain or withstand with or without baby hair because i know a lot of people don't like baby hair but there's a lot of people that do so you never know what you're about to do so um, you know, they can say they want baby hair in the beginning and then change their mind if the install is eating enough at the end, you know? But all your installs should be able to, you know, withstand without baby hair. So after I get it in place to where I want it, I'm going to part off that, um, those areas to where there's too much uh, lace or too much hair. And after I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and apply my elastic band. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and, um, so the back of the frontal down and i don't even think i recorded that part but yeah so the back of the frontal down and then go ahead and finish sewing on my webs so at first i started with like a horseshoe method and i'm going to continue that with this uh with this track 
and once I do that after I get to the other side I'm gonna flip it over and once I flip this one I'm gonna start doing like a, um, a inverted U shape method so instead of curving it upward I'm gonna be going downward just like that like y'all see how I'm flipping it and we're gonna bring them downward instead of upward now if that makes sense like if it doesn't make sense what I'm saying just do what you see <laughs> because I don't know how to explain it any other way like oh I do have, know how to explain it first you're gonna sew with a smile like place the tracks going up as if they're smiling and then when you get to that area you can sew in a frown you know the frown is the upside don't worry about it <laughs> just do what y'all see and when you get to this point you're gonna keep sewing until you get to the um the frontal part and this part you're gonna make it as seamless as possible so you're gonna be con connecting everything together you're gonna be sewing down from the um the weft to the braid and to the frontal just so everything connects so i'm gonna angle her back a little bit and it looks like i'm yanking her head back because i am so y'all can see it <laughs> and she probably cussing me out right now because girl why are you yanking my head but girl come on now you know i'm trying to let the girls see what they need to do to get it right and i'm just gonna go all the way around I'm going to tie it off by doing those three little uh, loop de doos around my needle. And then I'm going to cut off the excess hair and the excess thread. And it should look exactly like that. And now we are going to get to the favorite part of the video, which is the styling part. But first, we have to make sure that mold is intact. And anytime that I'm doing like a sew-in or really any style, I'm just so like obsessed with doing a mold because it just makes it look way flatter and it doesn't um force me to overly hot let me stop because if my clients watch this video they're gonna say girl you be hot combing our hair today i was gonna say it's gonna it's not gonna force me to overly hot comb their hair but i'm it's gonna get flat like y'all i i'm gonna make it flat so whatever i gotta do this is what i'm gonna do so i do my mold down with my Nairobi foam and i part off that back section and uh use the foam to comb that down and then i'm gonna part off that front section and comb that down too so after i do this um i'm just gonna let the mold chill out for a second fix my part as best as i can for right now this is not like a final result i'm not like using my memory my mirror to double check my part or anything it's just like a freehand part and then i'm gonna go and clean up the part later so after i do that initial mold i haven't set her in the dryer yet because i'm gonna go ahead and cut off that excess lace first and then i'm gonna soup around her baby hair the reason why i'm doing it like this is so that when i soup around her baby hair and i mold that down i can still make sure that i go in and um have everything secure so whenever i'm finished with the baby hair of course i use foam on my baby hair and um it makes it wet and i don't want it to lift up later so um I just go ahead and <laughs> why do Asia keep looking out? Do y'all see how she's looking at me? Like, why does she keep looking at me like that? Girl, I'm going to get your hair together. Like, come on now. Either way it go. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and part out her baby hair. I'm going to cut them out. And then, um, whenever I cut them, I cut it like an angle. And after I do that, I'm going to use my foam to keep on um, swooping and swooping around until it gets in a position that I like. And then I'm going to take my, um, I'm going to take my, uh, what am I saying? I'm going to take my band, because what, I know how to do hair, y'all. I promise I do. I don't know why I'm getting some time or flustered. I'm going to take my band and I'm going to secure it down because she keeps, staring at me like why she keeps staring at me <laughs> either way it go i'm gonna take my band and i'm going to um go ahead and put my band back on and sit her under the dryer with the cap on to mold it down and dry it completely and go from there Whenever I'm doing baby hair, I always use my mini flat iron to curl them. 
before I start molding them because they just lay a lot better and it's easier to swoop them around. Uh, the direction that you curl them really doesn't matter. Like some days I'll do to the back and I will swear that that's the best way. And then some days I'll do to the front and I'll swear that's the best way. It just really depends on what I want to do or what look I'm going for. But uh, yeah, curl it whichever way you see fit and whichever way works for you. And then just use a little bit of your foam and work it all the way through until you get it to a position that you like it. Now that I have everything in the position that I want, I'm just going to add a wig cap and then I put her under the dryer until it was completely dry. And now that she's under from now that she's back from under the dryer, I'm just going to um, take my comb and my hot comb and I'm going to comb that mold out. And now I'm going to go ahead and do my curls. Whenever I'm curling, I like to take diagonal sections. I'm using Sebastian's shape. Uh, I think it's called Sebastian's shape where... Um, I'm going to have to show y'all in the next video or leave it in the comments or something. Just let me know if y'all want to know. It's like Sebastian. It's white with like gold writing or something on it. And I'm going to spray the hair down and I'm just going to curl away from the hair. Today I'm using my, I think it's a two inch babyliss um, curling iron. And I'm just going to curl that away from her face. And use a pretty generous amount of your, um, of your uh, hairspray and go ahead and curl it and pin it out the way whenever you're doing pin curl i mean doing curls it is best to like use holding spray and pin it because it just helps the curls like set in longer and give you like a more voluminous look and it is easier or better for the curls to dry in the position that you curl them in um because it just holds the curl much better so yeah just go ahead and hairspray pin it hairspray pin it until you get completely finished with the curls For like a super duper uh, defined curl look this is like a flowy effortless type body curl so you can have the sections a little uh, thicker because that's the look we're going for we're not going for like a Shirley Temple type curl or a super defined curl it's just like a, a cute messy body style curl that's the look we're going for so this is how you achieve that look Now that I have all the curls done, I'm just going to let those cool out for a second. And then I'm going to go in and continue to comb my mold out and comb the baby hair out so they're not like stuck down to her head. And then after that, I'm going to go in and drop all the pins and I'm going to comb out her curls and continue the styling process. Once I have it down and combed out, I'm going to just add some slight layers into um, the bang portion or like the, the front fringe portion of her hair. And I am going to do it on both sides, but I'm only showing one side on this video because like I said, I record for multiple different social media uh, platforms. So I did one side for this platform and then I did the other side on a different video. So don't think that I didn't do both sides because I definitely did. And then I'm just going to comb it down and comb it around to make sure that it flows. And it should look something like this when you're finished. And then um, I took a break to go record other stuff. And then now I'm just going to add some um, 
curls back into her hair just to define that part a little bit more not too much because i'm still gonna comb them out but just to redefine them after i uh, mess with it from cutting it and it should look just like this A little bit more and this is pretty much the finished result um make sure y'all let me know what y'all think about this look in the comments um Asia's gonna flip her hair around just so y'all can see what the lace is hitting for and like what the baby hairs look like but yeah this is pretty much it make sure y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments um if you guys need any extra tips and tricks make sure y'all comment and y'all know I reply to every single comment. Just let me know what y'all looking for. And I got y'all for sure. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure y'all go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I love y'all. Bye.